Hello and welcome to another Skyhoy video. I'm Casper and I'm thrilled to present to you today the sheer power and versatility of our universal broadcast controllers. These aren't just your average controllers, they are designed to take command of a wide range of devices from cameras to video switches, routers, audio DSPs and audio mixers. Today we'll be showcasing how seamlessly our controllers can control the Sony FR7 PDC camera. They can control parameters such as pan, tilt, zoom, presets, Iris, Master Black, and all the detailed color parameters of the FR7. The Sony FR7 premiered at IPC22, and immediately after that, I would say this is one of the most popular high-end PDC cameras we have seen. It's the first PDC camera that actually allows the use of different E-mount lenses, making it a versatile multi-production camera. And furthermore, it also features full-frame image sensor for cinematic picture, which is more and more popular in live environments. So it's high-performing, yes, but it's also a joy for our controllers to navigate. And it's more than just a tool. The Sony FR7 is a gateway to endless creative possibilities. We integrated that FR7 with great support from Sony, so thank you for that. The camera can be operated from any PDC or RCP controller in the Skyhoy portfolio. And you can also use one of the most compelling features of our products, namely their modularity. So if you require a larger control surface, you have the freedom to combine different panels. And when it comes to flexibility, we offer an unparalleled experience. You can modify existing configurations, you can assign new parameters to any hardware component, you can simultaneously control multiple devices, for example, send triggers from a PDC controller over to your vision mixer or your router, all via the same ethernet cable. No need for any GPIO setup in that case. Our demo setup includes the PDC Extreme, the RCP Pro, and they are all primed and ready to interface with the Sony FR7. Today we also decided to show you something special. The Mega Panel in the environment with the Sony PDC cameras. The Mega Panel is our modular solution that combines multiple panels into one large workstation. So it can be built with PDC controllers as well. And here we show a new PDC view and frame shot plus combination, which will interface with the Sony PDC cameras as well. We'll begin with our flagship PDC controller, and that is the PDC Extreme. The PDC Extreme by Skyhoy is a robust, professional grade controller designed to manage PDC cameras in live environments. And it offers precise control with a joystick, customizable buttons, knobs, and its high level of compatibility allows to seamlessly control a wide array of PDC cameras and also other devices. There is also a dedicated zoom rocker on the PDC Extreme. There is an iris knob and a focus wheel. Right here. Actually, the PDC Extreme is already set up to operate the Sony FR7. Let's just test it. It does work. And we'll come back to the parameters we can set in the camera. But I also want to show you how it works in Reactor. The software running inside the PDC Extreme. It looks like this. This is the home screen of Reactor. It's a web UI software. And if I enter in here and I make a new project called Sony Video Sony Project, we'll just add this. We'll save it. We'll accept a few yeses, and then we'll add a device. So what we do now is we look up Sony, Sony, Sony FR7. They are along with a whole other bunch of Sony cameras. We'll select this one, and then we'll just type in the IP address right here, which I happen to know, and I also do know the password. So if I can do this right, you see we are already connected. It says it's connected to the camera. And that's a great thing. The PPC Extreme is talking to the camera and that's step number one. So step number two is that you need to put it onto the camera selector of your PPC Extreme. That happens by pressing this button and just select it because you already added it. And guys, now we have it selected. I can operate the camera. There you go. So now is the time to look at the things we can actually do with this camera. First of all, you see how the pictures from the camera has this shallow depth of field look that you are going for when you have a camera like this one. And you can see even though the lens is attachable to the camera, 
I am still able to zoom using the joystick. I promised you that on a PVC Extreme, there will be other ways of zooming. That would be using the zoom rocker. So you can see I can zoom out here using the zoom rocker as well. I also want to bring attention to the fact that we have this joystick sensitivity variable up here. So I can really turn that down. So let me see if I press all I can on the zoom rocker, you are actually seeing a super slow zoom because we are now at speed number one. Let's go to speed six. I press it all the way down. It's a little bit quicker. I go to 10 all the way down and it's much quicker. So you see, it's the same with the joystick. I have quick pan here on this one, but then if I turn it down to almost nothing, let's put it at three, then you see full swing of the joystick, slow movement. So you have all that on the PTC Extreme, the precision that you are going for. But one thing is the, the, um, the, the selection of the camera here. We also have presets. Let's try that out. So I'll just store preset by pressing and holding. It turns green. It has stored the preset. Let's just move out here a little bit. Zoom out with the camera. OK, I need to turn the joystick sensitivity up a little bit. OK, press and hold here to store that preset. Now we recall the first one, quick press. And we are recalling this one. You see it zooms in. It goes to the pan tilt position. Two things happening on that camera. And we now recall preset number two. So presets is in place as well. And up here, we have a menu that will take you through the settings that you care about with this camera. You can see on the home screen, we have broken out parameters that we think are the most important for you. And um, this is how the controller works. Obviously, we have these knobs to give you access to red and blue gain offsets or uh, adjustments for the white balance mode called memory A. We have also gain here. We have iris, which is currently not available. And you see that little forbidden sign that tells you that you cannot access it, probably because it's in auto mode. Then we have the focus, which is in manual mode. And then we have uh, the focus position measured in meters here, joystick sensitivity and so on. So we have auto iris in the exposure menu. It's currently off. It means that we are actually able to control the iris manually by this knob. If you turn it on, you see this becomes unavailable and it will now automatically control the iris of the lens. We have the color settings, which generally is populated by white balance settings. Uh, you see um, white balance tint. We have the temperature here. And actually, this is one place which is nice to dive into to also show how the integration of specific Sony cameras has been made. So for instance, if we go here, we have auto tracking white balance. What happens? All these knobs are sort of disabled. You see that little forbidden icon that indicates you can't change the parameter because the camera is in automatic mode. If I go to the other end of the range, we have the presets and the presets now disable certain adjustments here, but I still have the Kelvin degrees, which I can change. If I press the encoder, I have course adjustments done to this value. So you can see that it is it is moving quickly through the range. And now I have a very red picture because I'm assuming I have a serious um, uh, daylight coming in. If I go the other way, we should see the opposite happening. So you will see that we now have a more bluish picture as the camera adjusts to this. And I can finally go back to my memory A, which also gives me a chance to show you the white balance one push function. So being here at this one, if I press and hold this one, you'll actually see at the uh, white balance uh, one push function has painted the picture as you see it right now. But if I take this white piece of paper and just hold up here and then I press it once again, then you'll see that it is automatically picking up the white balance from that white surface I just presented to the camera. If we just take a quick look up here, then we have a um, debugging function that allows us to turn on the red tally of the FR7. You see the tally lamp on the side. It is now enabled and I can disable it again. So that's the PTC Extreme. And the wonder of this is when I move over to the RCP Pro that has a completely different focus, we'll see that many of the same patterns apply. So PTC Extreme, who is that for? That's for your cameraman, right? The guy who is in charge of framing your picture. But if we put this aside and we focus on the RCP Pro, this is for the shading operator. Actually, interesting, if the shading operator find that the camera guy is falling asleep, he still has this joystick that allows him to do a little bit of pan tilt operation on the camera. But apart from that, his job is to control the iris with the joystick. So as we're pulling the RCP joystick on the RCP Pro, you can see how we can adjust the iris of the lens. So at this point, the lens is fully open, letting in all the light that we can wish for. And as you're pulling it back, you can see the value is changing of the aperture of the lens. And we also, yeah, letting in less light. So this is the main functionality of an RCP. But we also have the master black ring that you turn down here and that will change the master black. You see a readout is over here 
and it changes basically how milky the black background will look. You can see now it was more milky and now I'm turning it into a more solid black as I'm turning the ring here. If we go to the menu, you'll see that like with the PDC Extreme, we can navigate through the same type of settings up here on the display and the knobs, so on. If we go to the color, you, you, you easily identify that we can now find the white balance mode here, setting it to auto white balance. We can go back to this memory A. So if I turn this knob, then we'll be able to adjust the red like that. And now I begin to like what I'm seeing. Okay, so that was my manual adjustment of the white balance uh, on the ICP Pro here. If we go to ND, ND filters, we see the same, etc. So really the, the RCP Pro is like the PC Extreme. It's the same software controlling the camera, but the features, tactile features, is we do have a joystick for controlling the lens. Over here, we had a joystick for controlling the pan tilt position and the zoom. Finally, we have the Mega Panel. It's the powerhouse controller for larger studios and control rooms. And we're focusing today on the FR7 control on the Mega Panel, but you should check out devicesscarhoy.com to see how many integrations we have with switching systems such as Atom Constellation, VMix, TriCaster, Keras, just to name a few. The setup for the Mega Panel is similar as for all other controllers. Here we already have prepared it with PDC View and Frameshot Plus to act as one larger PC controller. So I want to show you how that works first. One of the impressive features of the PDC View and the Frameshot Plus is its ability to grab a thumbnail of the camera picture the moment you store a preset. So let me demonstrate how this works. We have here preset number one, it's not saved. And as I press and hold this button, it will record the preset and you also see that a thumbnail is now recorded. So I can change the framing just a tiny bit here. And when I do, and I press and hold this one, it will record also the preset and the thumbnail into the controller. And I could go on like this on multiple pages of presets here. But the cool thing is, as I now press this one, it will quickly recall exactly that framing which is shown in the display. And of course, the same will happen when I do it over here. Apart from that, everything else you see is basically the same as on the PDC Extreme. You find that the menus that I can go through are the same settings. I have a secondary page with audio and system, etc. We have the joystick here, Hall Effect joystick with zoom built into the joystick and a button on top to reset us back to the home page with the same settings you have seen on the PDC Extreme. Now, let's conceptualize a larger studio workflow involving the panels that I'm showing here today and the Sony FR7. Different operators, they would use different Skahoy products and each of these would be tailored to their needs. For instance, the PTC Extreme with its precision control over camera movements would be ideal for the PTC operator, while the RCP Pro with its focus on shading would be perfect for the color matching operator. Then there's the Mega Panel with its comprehensive vision mixing capabilities. And that would of course serve as the central hub for vision mixing. But you blend in PDC control with the PDC view and the Frameshot Plus with the possibility of this quick and intuitive preview of camera presets from the colorful displays. These are just examples of how our controllers can be used, but the possibilities are truly endless due to the inherent flexibility and the modularity of the Skahoy products. That wraps up our in-depth look in the PDC Extreme, RCP Pro, the Mega Panel, all in conjunction with the Sony FR7. And at Skahoy, we are dedicated to empowering you with the universal controllers that are not only efficient and versatile, but also perfectly tailored for your specific needs. Remember, you are always able to find more more information and explore our integrations on our website. And thank you for joining me on this video. This is Casper signing off. Stay creative. See you in the next video. Please stay tuned on our social media platforms and sign up for our newsletter to get the latest updates.